good morning today we will discuss about the bambik's mori life cycle bambik's mori is a common silkworm which is grown in the uh, india china japan and uh, some other countries uh this is the part of uh, fifth sem syllabus uh, where uh, we are having the applied zoology as you see in the uh, slide there are four uh, chapters are there so where we'll discuss about uh, uh, the applied zoology how the zoology is useful uh, to the society so we can see the in the syllabus first unit is fisheries and uh, their uh, rearing the second unit is about uh, uh, life cycle of silk worm and uh, sericulture in india and uh, how the silk is spinning rearing takes place that we will discuss in third unit we will discuss about the apiculture that is rearing of uh, bees honey bees in fourth uh, chapter we will discuss about the poultry and uh, uh, layers and broilers the diseases of the poultry industry that we will discuss in the uh, third uh, in the fourth unit so when you see the history uh, culture uh, of the sericulture in 3500 bc the china is the first country uh, to produce this seri uh, start this sericulture uh, they kept secretly uh, the sericulture rearing but some of the monks of the country uh, they uh, uh, smuggled and uh, they given to the european countries in 552 bc so that that uh, in during that process the uh, sericulture rearing was spread all over the world uh, at present also china japan are the largest producers of the uh, raw sericulture uh, uh, raw silk production uh, producers in the world india started the sericulture production uh, 2000 uh, 28 bc uh, 2 bc onwards okay so the uh, how many types of silkworms are there when we see silkworms are six types of silkworms are there uh, they are uh, the num one is muga silkworm this is called as antheria mylita antheria mylita and um, um, tussar silk so that is also called uh, tussa silkworm antheria uh, muga is antheria assamis assami tussar is antheria mylita then uh, it is also called another species also there antheria papia so the other one is third one is oak silkworm antheria royale so this is indian uh, species there are other chinese and japanese species also there uh, uh, next giant silkworm attacus attacus At attacus atlas and the eri silkworm so eri silkworm is it is antheria richeni or essini then other sixth one is chinese mulberry that is commonly called as the mulberry silkworm bambix mori uh, this was we are talking about silk is a part of our tradition and culture and the silk is used economically a uh, lot of uh, disease uh, benefits are there economic benefits are there uh, from bambix mori the silk uh, it is widely used in uh, making of sarees kurtas shalwars and even threads also um, ropes also very lighter and uh, very durable uh, ropes are made from the silk which is extracted from the bambix mori cocoons uh, and uh, the parachutes are the parachute ropes are made up of uh, the um, silk only so when you see the silk worm worms insects are belongs to arthropodan family that is the largest uh, arthropoda largest uh, arthropoda largest arthropo phylum is largest phylum is arthropoda so when you see the um, a systematic position of bambix mori that is art phylum arthropoda and uh, class insecta subclass uh, pteriogota 
sub division is endopterygota, order is Lepidoptera and fam family Bambidae, Bambicidae, genus Bambix mori is the species. So, the scientific name of the common silkworm is Bambix mori. Uh, when you see the habits and habitat of the silkworm, the, it was a, a domesticated uh, species. We cannot find uh, the Bambix mori wild species in the wild uh, world, uh, wild nature because in thousands of years ago as we seen already, it was rearing started hence uh, uh, the wild varieties are not found. So, wild variety uh, no longer exist uh, of the silkworm. Adult silk moths can no longer uh, uh, fly because of, uh, uh, because of their uh, huge body uh, and feeble wings. The wings are very weak hence uh, they cannot fly. The larvae that is caterpillar larvae of the silkworm uh, which is uh, heavy voracious feeder of the mulberry leaves uh, which feed on the mulberry tree and uh, it is a monophagus we call it as monophagy. So, which eat a specific kind of, of uh, leaves if uh, that kind is uh, mulberry leaves it is only feeding on a mulberry leaves hence it is called as uh, monophagy larvae feed on mulberry, mulberry leaves. So, external feature of the silkworm when you observe it is uh, silk worm or silk moth, it is 25 uh, millimeter uh, uh, size, 25 millimeter size and wings are 40 to 50 millimeters. Body is creamy and uh, white yellow in color. Body is divided into three distinct regions, uh, they are head, thorax, abdomen. Head bears a pair of compound eyes, a pair of antennae and uh, compound eyes are uh, the specific property of uh, insects, right. So, the antennae are sensory organs, symphonic mouth parts are present, uh, but uh, it is a uh, leafy, uh, it is a, a mulberry feeder, uh, okay. So, they are almost degenerating symphonic organs are present. When we see thorax, it has three pairs of legs, two pairs of wings are present in the thorax region and uh, the wings are present, but it cannot fly because huge body, massive body does not help the insect to uh, in flying. So, they are very slow uh, creepy organisms, they live uh, after coming out of the cocoon, they live four to five days and meet copulation takes place, internal fertilization occur and they lay eggs. Soon after laying eggs, the female uh, insect uh, die and uh, the eggs hatches and uh, caterpillar is their metamorphosis occurs, caterpillar is their uh, larvae. So, when you see the abdomen, the female is larger than male because a great number of eggs are present in the female stomach. So, silkworm is dioecious the sexes are separate, male female uh, species are present separately they, low, they exist. The female is larger in size because of the body of female is a containing, the stomach is consist of containing eggs, hence the uh, body of the female insect is high, big in size. So, fertilization already we discussed is internal, development includes complicated metamorphosis, uh, metamorphosis uh, the has it ha, it includes the caterpillar larva. The eggs are after copulation. The female uh, insect silk moth Bambix mori lays 300 to 500 clusters of eggs on the mulberry leaves itself, and they uh, undergo uh, hatching, uh, incubation. Then they produce the caterpillar. This is the stage. These are the stages of the insects. That is caterpillar larva pupa imago. So, the eggs hatches and become caterpillar. The caterpillar larva undergoes uh, egg diasis, uh, metamorphosis occurs and it uh, undergo metamorphosis, five in star stages occurs and la finally, the pupa, uh, it, it secret the, it become the pupa and uh, it forms the cocoons, uh, cocoon by secreting the uh, silk from their uh, hypopharynx, the cinerates, uh, 
so they produces the silk along with the gummish or glue like uh, component that is called as uh, sericin and with the help of that it secrete the silk thread and uh, it form the cocoon so then after cocoon 14 almost the caterpillar in the cocoon it uh, um, undergo the metamorphosis the remaining form of uh, remaining part of the development in the cocoon up to 14 days 15 days time it takes and it uh, oh, it uh, open the cocoon uh, crack the cocoon and comes out as a imago a baby insect imago so when you see the life cycle of the uh, butterfly so the adult female butterfly after copulation it lays eggs the first instar larva hatch out after few days then it undergo molting and uh, then it produces it become the second instar larva second stage larva and the molting takes place third stage larva molting takes place and uh, it become fourth stage larva and it also undergo molting and become fifth stage in uh, stage larva and it uh, uh, forms the pupa so the pupa uh, takes uh, formation takes place after almost 15 days fortnight of time 14 days 15 days time the pupa uh, stages exist so then after the pupa uh, full uh, development occurs the caterpillar uh, the after complete development as a imago stage it breaks the cocoon and uh, comes out of the uh, cocoon so during this stage the cocoons are collected and uh, and uh, they are uh, um, boiled in a hot water then the cocoon silk becomes soft and it is reeling takes place so reeling uh, was uh, taken uh, taken place so in india csrir csri central uh, silk research institute which is located in the mysore it is doing great research in the field of silk production and uh, uh, research many uh, it is giving opportunity to the zoologists to become a sericulturist also it is also educating the rural farmers to set up the uh, sericulture um, cottage industries at uh, their places so when you see the economic benefits it is almost 1507 uh, 15750 rupees are uh, the farmers are getting by rearing in a hectare of uh, um, uh, mulberry uh, crops so like that it is uh, giving much money compared with the other crops so when you see the thread it is 4.5 to 5 8.5 uh, uh, microns diameter and it is made up of five fibers the sil uh, silk fiber is a fibrous protein the uh, lustrous nation, nature that is the uh, shining nature is because of the sericin and the components right so reeling and spinning so it after cocoon formation before the imago comes out of the cocoon it is the uh, well grown cocoons are collected and boiled in the water and they undergo the process of a uh, collection of the silk uh, thread is called as reeling so after boiling the cocoons become soft reeled off and a single cocoon yields 1000 to 1500 meters of unbroken silk fiber and 400 and, uh, 454 grams of silk is obtained from the 2000 uh, 25000 cocoons a few live cocoons are kept as a need for the uh, next crop they kept as a seeds for the next crop so this is about uh, we discussed uh, today the um, silk uh, bambix mori sericulture in india different types of uh, silk worms how they are reared uh, it is uh, one of the best uh, commercial and uh, cottage industry uh, but uh, it needs a little care and uh, hygienic conditions otherwise the insects may die and there are other issue also there that is the insect the very smooth caterpillars are being eaten by the predators and pebrin disease also causes lot of disturbance to the farmers so care should be taken and technical support should be taken from the uh, 
um, authorities like agriculture, veterinary doctors like that. So, thank you very much.